class we have learned that uh, the ninth lesson the rampur village economy in that lesson we have learned some topics like the story of rampur and farming in rampur the land uh, and natural resources about the land and natural resources those topic we have learned already so today i am going to explain you about uh, land distribution in rampur how the land distributed in rampur so the what is the population of rampur how many families are there in rampur so these all details i will give you today so the land distribution in ram in rampur so the village activity is the agriculture agriculture is the main activity in village uh, in rampur village in rampur so most of the people are depended on agriculture but there is no sufficient lands in the village in rampur so the total population in the rampur is uh, 2000 uh, 2200 uh, 660 2000 660 people are there in rampur and also the total families in rampur are 450 families are there among the 450 families 150 families are sts and scs means scheduled caste and scheduled tribe families are living in rampur Uh, they are uh, living uh, in the corner places corner places of the villages in rampur so they are uh, dalits and adivasis mostly they are the landless landless agriculture laborers they are living in small clusters in small huts they they live in cramped places in rampur their living conditions are very difficult and uh, the, their living standards standards are low these agriculture laborers mostly depended on rich farmers and others so like 150 families are there those are the uh, landless uh, agriculture laborers in rampur so next uh, the medium and large farmers medium and large farmers the medium farmers means the farmers who are having more than 2 hectares of land more than 2 hectares of land and they are uh, they are uh, they, they fulfill their requirements they are having savings at the time at the time of investments of cultivation means at the time of showing the Uh, agriculture showing the crops they are not depended on others uh, they they cultivated their lands with their uh, capital with their own capital so like medium medium farmers somehow uh, they were better they fulfill their uh, at least they fulfill their family requirements and they are not depended on others large farmers large farmers means who, who are having uh, the more than the 10 hectares of land more than 10 hectares of land they are the rich people uh, landlords they are having more money they are having savings they are having large houses in the villages in fact they have the parking place at the same at the same time they are garden in front of the house the boundary uh, walls and uh, Uh, they they made their houses with uh, bricks and cement and concrete slabs they are they are, they are, they are having their uh, concrete slabs with roof was uh, strong with concrete slab so they are having all the facilities uh, within in the house there is no financial problem they are not dependent on others they are having the Uh, agriculture uh, uh, missions like uh, the tractor tractors and harvesting machines thrashers also 
sometimes they are giving hay to other farmers also tractors and other things so like the large farmers are having uh, are the prosperous in the village they are not dependent on any other people there is no deficiency of capital to them so then uh, the small farmers uh, these uh, medium and uh, large farmers are the 60 families 60 families are there in rampur next uh, small farmers small farmers are the 240 families are there in rampur small farmers are not uh, fulfill their requirement uh, at the time of showing uh, they, they can't able to invest uh, money for uh, cultivation at the time of showing time they are dependent on others like large farmers and they are dependent on money lenders uh, they are uh, mostly these small farmers are having uh, below two hectares of land to below two hectares of land so the, uh, the production uh, the, the income of uh, agriculture income was not sufficient uh, to them for their families they can't able to fulfill their requirements at the same time family requirements that's why at the time uh, they can't able to invest money for uh, cultivation at the time of showing time so they mostly they depended on money lend money lenders and uh, uh, the uh, large farmers at the time of showing they, they take money borrow money for their cultivation so the small farmers mostly doing other works also they are working in uh, working as agriculture laborers in the uh, landlord and also they are doing non farming activities like uh, milk uh, uh, sold the milk into the markets and some other non farm activities they are doing uh, then they, they uh, survive their families by that they survive survive their families so one example also given in our textbook like gobind gobind have uh, the unirrigated land 2.5 hectares of land he has he has so he did cultivation in that uh, land with the help of uh, his uh, three sons he has three sons with the help of his uh, family members he he do the cultivation but that uh, agriculture income is not sufficient for them for their families so uh, in spite of that he he has uh, by one buffalo and uh, the milk was uh, sold into the market uh, after that they can uh, they can manage to uh, run run his uh, family somehow he has uh, managed to run his family but uh, they, he has the difficult conditions means the small farmer not able to fulfill all the requirements so after the death of gobind this 2.25 hectares of land again divided into parts so each son was taken 0.75 hectares of land so this is a small piece of land again they divided so it become as a small piece of land so they used the modern inputs in the agriculture and they cultivated crops even though these sons are not can't able to fulfill their requirements they must be do the work in uh, other works like non farm activities generally they can able to survive his family so like that conditions are there in uh, in india in villages the small farmers can't able to get more money by the agriculture they are doing other activities and uh, earning the money for their families so in our textbook uh, the one uh, example also given table so here type of the farmers like uh, once you have to observe it, this uh, map so the type of farmers uh, that there, there are two types of farmers are there so one is uh, the uh, small farmers uh, so second one is uh, medium and large farmers the small type of uh, uh, lands so, so uh, the, the small farmers uh, are the you have to observe this one this picture can understand so the small farmers cannot uh, the small farmers means the, there are the 87 percent of the people are small farmers in rampur region uh, they are having uh, the 48 percent of the lands only 
there are 240 families, means 87 percent of the small farmers uh, who are uh, small farmers who are having 48 percent of the land solid. So the medium and the large farmers, uh, the percentage is 13 percent, but they are having more lands in the village, like um, 52 percent of the lands in Rampur, the medium and large farmers are having. The small farmers number is high, population is 87 percent, even though they are having only 48 percent of the lands in Rampur. So this is one of the examples. So in, in entire country also, the most number of the people, 84 percent of the people are the small farmer, small farming communities only. So they are having uh, the small quantity of the lands uh, when compared to medium and large farmers who are the small percent of the number, they are having more lands, right? 87 percent and 13 percent, okay children? So small farmers means 87 percent of the people who are having only 48 percent of the lands. So the, the medium and the large farmers who are the 13 percent of the numbers, they are having 52 percent of the lands. So the small farmers means the below 2 hectares of land, the people who are having below 2 hectares of land, those are uh, come under the, those are come under the uh, small farmers, medium and large, medium farmers means above 2 hectares of land means medium farmers, large farmers means uh, uh, above 10 hectares of land means large farmers. So this is the data given in our test we have to observe it. Okay, children. So this is the topic about uh, the land distribution in Rampur. So another topic is that that is uh, uh, organizing organization of production. Organization of production. So do you know uh, the agriculture sector, industrial sector, anywhere we want to produce anything means uh, we need the inputs. What are the inputs we have re need? Those are only we have called as the factors of production. There are four factors of production through which we can produce the goods like land, labor, uh, capital and enterprise. These four are the factors of production. What are, what are the factors of production means? Four. One land, labor, third one is capital and enterprise. So uh, in any production activity we need these four things. So especially in agriculture fields, so there are uh, the land mining, water, these are the natural sources, natural sources are required for uh, agriculture fields, okay. So agriculture mostly required the fertile lands and water. So the natural resources are required, this is the first requirement. What is the first requirement of production? What is the first requirement of production in agriculture and large industries? Uh, they require land. Without land, we cannot able to stand also even. So land is the first requirement. So the natural resources such as the water, the mining, forest, these are also come under the natural resources come under the first requirement in the, uh, in the production process. What is the second requirement? It means labor. Labor is two types, skilled and unskilled. Even in agriculture and uh, agriculture fields as well as in uh, industrial fields also we need skilled workers as well as unskilled workers, means manual workers. For example, in, in agriculture like uh, coffee gardens, tea gardens, there we have need skilled laborers. At the same time we need the manual workers. In industries, the uh, accountants, computer operators and engineers like managers, so these all are the required the technical support people. These all are the skilled people who are required in the industries. At the same time, we require the manual workers in the industries also. So, skilled and unskilled means manual workers are required in the industries. These all are the whoever working in the particular industry whoever working in the particular industry, like uh, engineers are working in the industries, so computer operators and accountants, managers, sign, uh, some uh, technical support persons at the same time, the uh, manual
casual workers, casual laborers, sweepers. So like that, these all are people are the part and parcel of the country, uh, industry. These all are the part and parcel of the uh, company. They are producing the production. That's why uh, in economic term, these all are come under the labor only. These all are come under the workers. Uh, there is the difference is there in between, but uh, these all are come under the working category only. Okay, laborers. So, like labor, the second requirement is the labor. Third one is capital. Capital is two types. One is the fixed and fiscal capital. The buildings, land, machines, agriculture tools, like uh, uh, the power plough and the tractors, motors, and uh, these all are come under the fixed capital which were using uh, the with, with, uh, with some repair works uh, we, we are doing some repair of this physical uh, the capital and we are using continuously for years so continuously we are using this these machines and buildings and uh, land for uh, many years so the those are come under the physical capital or fixed capital so next to second one is uh, working capital. Working capital, raw material and money is come under the working capital. For example, yarn is the raw material for weavers. Weavers are using yarn uh, is the raw material making cloths. So like uh, potters using uh, um, clay. Clay is the raw material it is using potters and making the pots. So this is the raw material. In industries also they required so many things as the industry. industries using workers and producing products. Workers, they are paying uh, salaries, wages to the industrial workers and producing products. That's why the wages are come under the uh, raw material. So this is a raw material and uh, the working capital means the raw material it is not APS. It is using uh, in, as a input in the process of production process of production so the working capital and the fixed capital are the physical capital is two types in the capital next uh, this is the third requirement in the um, production process the fourth requirement is the enterprises or entrepreneur enterprise means we, we want to produce the production we need the factors means the owners of the industries owners of the industries and uh, the owners of the industry owners of, owners of the fiscal capital who are organized the factors of production who are organized the factors of production such as land labor and capital then finally they produce the goods they can bear the profit and loss they they have the confidence they have the confidence and they can bear the profit and the loss, uh, they are taking responsibility, whatever it may be, in the production process. Uh, if they get the profits or loss, they are bear, uh, they can have, and also they are, they are, uh, they have idea about the market of their production. They, they are uh, uh, having idea about the market of their production, they, they do the production, they organize all the factors of production like uh, the land, labor and capital and finally they did the production. So uh, they have knowledge about the, this uh, uh, production, they have knowledge uh, and they organize all these things and finally they produce it. So example, doctors, lawyers, small vendors, traders, the farmers also they invested money and they grow the crop and they bear the profit or loss. So like these all we will, these all are come under the enterprise or entrepreneur. Okay, so thank you for watching my video.